In a stunning and unexpected move, Riverside County Sheriff Chad Bianco has thrown his weight behind Donald Trump's 2024 presidential campaign. Known far and wide for his unwavering commitment to law enforcement, Bianco didn't hold back in his scathing criticism of California's leadership, condemning their lenient approach towards criminals and advocating for drastic reforms. With a touch of biting humor, he quipped that perhaps placing a felon in the White House is the bold solution America desperately needs, firmly backing Trump as the leader who can truly restore the nation's greatness. Don't miss. What are Sheriff Chad Bianco's main criticisms of California's criminal justice policies? How does Bianco view the relationship between crime and societal factors? Why does Bianco endorse Donald Trump for the 2024 presidential election? Hello, California. It's Riverside County Sheriff Chad Bianco. You know, for the past 30 years, I've been doing everything I could to keep our community safe. I've been doing everything I could to keep our community safe. Public sympathy resonates with a profound dedication to public safety and duty, cherishing the role of law enforcement in shielding our community. It echoes the significance of individual responsibility and a heartfelt commitment to order and policing. By arresting criminals and putting them in jail and putting them in prison, keeping them out of our neighborhoods. For the last five years, I've been very critical about our governor for slashing our budgets from corrections, for uh, letting prisoners out early, for closing our prisons. I've been very critical about our governor for slashing our budgets from corrections, for letting prisoners out early, for closing our prisons. The public's outcry against the government's actions resonates deeply with shared anxieties about overly lenient policies that might endanger our safety. We yearn for a sense of accountability and a robust judicial system to rein in crime and restore our peace of mind. I've been critical of our state legislature for passing laws to make it harder to put people in prison. I've been critical of our state legislature for passing laws to make it harder to put people in prison. There's a growing outcry against legislative changes that many believe are crippling our criminal justice system. These changes are seen as a direct threat to our efforts to keep communities safe, eroding the very foundations of law and order. I've been critical for their changing laws that let prisoners out early. I've been critical for their changing laws that let prisoners out early, highlighting the staunch resistance to early release programs. These policies pose a serious threat to public safety. They evoke strong public emotions, fostering a collective desire for harsh sentences and a firm belief in the deterrent power of imprisonment. And I've been critical for our attorney general for seemingly not caring about crime and really being an embarrassment to, to law enforcement. I've been critical for our attorney general for seemingly not caring about crime and really being an embarrassment to law enforcement. It feels like a deep betrayal when those in power, who should be our strongest allies in upholding the law, turn their backs on us. There's a growing sense that the fight against crime is faltering, crying out desperately for robust and decisive leadership in the realm of justice. And this love affair that our governor and our state legislature have with criminals is based on the belief that uh, criminals are not responsible for their own actions. They're a victim of society. And really, it's it's our fault. It's society's fault. It's business's fault. It's uh, we are it's cops fault. Uh, it, 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 it might be my fault. Uh, law enforcement, apparently, if you listen to our governor, is systemically racist. If you listen to our legislature, our laws are systemically racist. Our judicial system is systemically racist. Um, all of these people that are being put in jail are because of law enforcement bias and DA bias and all of these things. And so they let them out. They give them food. They give them housing. They give them money. They give them drugs and alcohol now. They let them out. They give them food. They give them housing. They give them money. They give them drugs and alcohol now. The outcry against governmental aid for ex-prisoners stems from a deep-seated fear that it may inadvertently encourage criminal behavior. There is a powerful need to uphold personal accountability and ensure that every action has its corresponding consequences. And um, I'm, I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm getting tired. I've got to be honest, I'm getting tired. The current policy's exhaustion and failure are palpable, echoing the deep-seated fatigue and frustration felt by many. This narrative resonates with a public disenchanted by the trajectory of criminal justice reform, tapping into their disillusionment and yearning for meaningful change. I'm getting tired, and I'm wondering if I'm having a change of heart and deciding that, you know what, maybe I've been wrong, and I think I'm going to change teams.
I know it's going to make some of you angry. I know that you're going to be mad at me, but I'm going to change teams. I think they're onto something, but I don't think they're doing enough. I think that we need to go big. You know me, it, go big or go home. You're the biggest, you do the best, you're the best at everything, and you might as well do something right if you're going to do it. And I'm all in. And I hope that you're all with me. I hope that you all have this change of heart. I hope that you're all with me. I hope that you all have this change of heart. The call is for action and unity, driven by a passionate belief in political leadership that promises to restore order and security. It's about the power of collective efforts to ignite change and uphold shared principles, making a profound impact on our future. Uh, you all feel that this is the definitely the right thing to do, and you come alongside me in this venture. And um, I, I think it's time that instead of letting them out of jail and, and, and giving them alcohol and drugs and everything else, I think it's time we put a felon in the White House. Trump 2024, baby. Let's save this country and make America great again. Sheriff Chad Bianco of Riverside County, California, has thrown his hat into the ring for Donald Trump in the 2024 presidential race. Bianco, a seasoned law enforcement veteran, hasn't shied away from criticizing state leadership over the past five years. He's particularly vocal about budget cuts to corrections, early prisoner releases, and the shuttering of prisons. He believes California's leaders have skewed policies that coddle criminals, operating on the premise that society is to blame for criminal behavior, not the individuals themselves. This, according to Bianco, has paved the way for laws and practices that weaken law enforcement and jeopardize public safety. Bianco points out how the state's leaders and legislature have painted the judicial system and law enforcement as systemically racist, fueling a vicious cycle where criminals are released only to be showered with housing, money, drugs, and alcohol. He can't hide his frustration with these policies, feeling they fail to hold individuals accountable for their actions. In a surprising and somewhat cheeky twist, Bianco suggests that, given the state's leniency towards criminals, it might just be fitting to back a felon for the White House. Hence, his endorsement of Trump for the 2024 election. He urges the public to rally with him in this newfound resolve, aiming to save the country and make America great again. Sheriff Chad Bianco embodies a deep sense of personal responsibility and sincerity. His vocal criticism of state criminal justice policies and his bold decision to change political affiliations are seen as a testament to his unwavering commitment to his principles. Driven by a sincere desire to safeguard the community's safety and welfare, Bianco isn't afraid to make controversial decisions if they align with his values. Supporters resonate with Sheriff Bianco's concerns about law and order. They share his frustrations over policies that, in his view, undermine the criminal justice system by facilitating early inmate releases without enhancing accountability. He firmly believes that maintaining strict law enforcement is vital for social stability and the protection of law-abiding citizens. Sheriff Bianco's political shift is deeply rooted in his experiences and growing dissatisfaction with current administrative policies. His support for Donald Trump stems from his belief that Trump prioritizes law and order, reflecting Bianco's desire for a leader who mirrors his values. This change is a reaction to his perception of systemic failures and a quest for a more aligned leadership. But Bianco's critique of institutional issues within state agencies, his perspective on the judicial system, and his stance on law enforcement being unfairly labeled as racist echo widespread conservative criticism. His statements highlight a belief in personal responsibility and obligations. The broader political and social climate has undoubtedly shaped Bianco's views, as has the psychological impact of feeling unsupported by state leaders and the relentless criticism of law enforcement. Understanding this context sheds light on Bianco's passionate support for Donald Trump, viewing it as a counter to what he perceives as the current administration's leniency on crime. The moral and ethical implications of Bianco's decisions invite reflection, especially in supporting a candidate with a controversial past. Yet, Sheriff Bianco justifies his stance as part of his overarching mission to protect the community, trusting in Trump's capacity to restore the law and order he deems essential. What do you think?